Guys, today we are continuing our journey to put the RTX 3056 gig in literally everything. And today we have the Dell XPS, which features a modern 10 Gen i5, 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD that could be had for 250 bucks. Is this the perfect option for the 3056 gig? We're gonna put it together and find out after a word from today's sponsor. It's no secret that we're experts when it comes to budget gaming PCs. And our go-to tactic is just taking an old used office system and just slapping in a graphics card. The hard part though is deciding what use pre-built and what use GPU to use and of course finding a good deal. Well today's video sponsor Jawa is here to help by providing an amazing online marketplace full of insane deals on those two things and more. Beyond just having tons of super talented builders listing systems at affordable prices, you're able to find some incredible prices on graphics cards. For example, this Lenovo RTX 2080 is just $195, and the best part is, it's even repasted and cleaned, which is rare to see when buying used cards. Jawa even purchased GPUs directly from customers to make it the easiest possible solution for selling a GPU. This is perfect for all of you who are looking to upgrade your GPU in a fast and convenient way. If you're interested in learning more or in shopping for some amazing deals yourself, head over to jawa.gg today. Big thanks to Jawa for sponsoring today's video. Now. Let's get back to it. Now I know what you all think of the 3056 gig. Trash. But it's not actually trash. In our opinion, especially for upgrading these kind of PCs, this right here, again, is a Dell XPS tower we bought off of eBay. The original listing was $299, but of course, in eBay fashion, we submitted an offer of $250 and got this mm. computer with an i5-10400, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 256 gig SSD. I love these XPSs. They actually have so much upgrade potential compared to the OG Optiplexes, guys. For sure. So yeah, as you can see on the inside here, there's a lot of room to work with. And one thing I didn't even know before I bought this is it does come with a six pin oh. power connector. So in theory, if you want to save some money, yes, the 3056 gig is a great new option, but something like, let's say the 1660 Super, you could find for under $100, you could get close to the same performance and throw it in one of these and save a bit of money. But yeah, this even came with a dual channel, DDR4. And then they even added a 512 gig Samsung two and a half inch SSD, which is pretty cool. A pretty good size stock cooler that's like slightly larger than, you know, the typical tension coolers. And they gave us a Dell power supply that can do 360 watts. It's nice. pretty good. I like to see at least 300 plus watts with these when we add a graphics card. Obviously with the 3056 gig, which does require any external power, and that's why we love it so much, we'll really be fine in even a less wattage power supply setup. But the specific MSI model right here, this two fan card comes in at $169, which putting this together, a little over 400 bucks. We get modern 10th gen, we get DDR4 memory, we get a 6 gig graphics card, and it's very easy to do. Three display outs as well. That's definitely a plus. So you're gonna show them how to put it in there? Because normally we yeah. show you guys how to add storage and maybe even RAM, <laughs> but this time it's all ready to go. We just gotta plop in the GPU, which is very simple. These eBay sellers are just making it easier and easier, honestly. I remember when we paid this much for a Dell Optiplex. All right, so we already got the side panel off. That's step number one. This seems like the easiest upgrade ever. I think I did notice is this, uh, this hard drive cage is going kind of crazy. Oh, why do they leave it so loose? It doesn't affect performance, right? Yeah, it doesn't affect yeah, performance, whatever. whatever. We'll, we'll fix that it. later. We take this latch off like that, swing open. This is gonna be tool I can just already tell. And then, oh, I was about to break the wrong one off. So we don't even need to break these off. Look, it's like they knew that we were gonna put a six gig 3050 in there. All right, and then we just take the card and we just need to make sure that it lines up with this PCIe lane like this. So I gotta move it a little bit. And then once we're lined up in the front as well, we're gonna give some force. Boom, that was, that was a good click. And then make sure up here, let me show this to Jonah, that your um, actual bracket is in place and it should just close nice and easy. Wow, that was, <laughs> there we go. So the Baba Boopy. A Baba Boopy, so nice, so clean, so ready <laughs> to game. But yeah, we're gonna go and test this in some games. Obviously at home, if you're following this video, we use these videos as a way to show you guys, hey, 3056 gig, really good new market option for these office computers. It's up to you guys at home to find these office PCs and hopefully with all these videos and all the options we do show you guys, you can find the perfect one for you. But a little over $400 is probably our most expensive option. So we're gonna benchmark it, see if it's worth that money, and then talk more about other things you can do with this PC and uh, see if this one is worth the money. Let's do it. All right, gamers, we are now in Fortnite on this budget PC with the RTX 3050 running DX12, far view distance and low textures. Now I'm gonna do one drop here running these settings before I do any of the performance mode and uh, remove any of the high res textures or anything like that, just to see what the absolute limit is. Um, obviously you could go that route, go performance settings, get even more performance, but sometimes when you have newer hardware, it's honestly better running DX12 low settings in Fortnite and uh, get a better experience. But we'll see what we end up getting here. I will say one thing, CPU is running a little bit warm. 
Uh, it definitely is running a little bit warm under that tower cooler, so I might check and see what the thermal paste application looks like, or that cooler just might not be ideal for it. But hey, we're getting 100 plus FPS right now, not too bad. The beauty of having modern hardware. And it, it's funny we joke about this being modern hardware in comparison to some of the other 6th and 7th gen uh, CPU systems we've taken a look at. This is still technically a 5 year old CPU, which makes me feel incredibly old. Yeah, we're still riding in the high, not nah, I say high 80s, we're still peaking in the 80s right now on the CPU. A little bit toasty, not great, but um, it's not bad. It's well within operating temperature for sure. And we're still boosting up the four gigahertz, which is kind of what you expect with this i5. Is there a bullet drop in this game? Oh, okay, there we go. I was gonna say like, what is happening? Really? Yeah, this is, this is pretty good. This is smooth. This is what running something like a 10 Gen i5 versus running a 6 Gen, uh, getting that 6 core 12 thread, makes Fortnite a much smoother experience. You don't have to deal with any stutters or anything like that. So eSports titles, you're definitely good with this uh, configuration. I'd say I didn't like this gun at first, it's kind of fun now. Hey. Okay, there it is. Sorry, bud. Wow. But yeah, guys, Fortnite's running good. Um, before we do finish the rest of the benchmarks and um, run the builds ins and stuff like that, I'm gonna check the thermal paste real quick and just see if it happens to be a little bit crusty, a little dried up. But honestly, Dell is known on these newer systems for not providing proper cooling for these CPUs. Um, and if that's the case, I don't think it's within temperatures where I'd be worried about it failing early or anything, but I'd like it to be a bit cooler than 80s while we're gaming under 70% load. So let's go ahead and check that thermal pace and then we'll benchmark some other games. Yeah, that thermal pace spread looks a little bit lackluster. It doesn't look old though, not super old, but we'll put some Arctic MX4 on there, try to clean this thing up a little bit. Um, but I will say this cooler is physically really warm. So, and it's, it's again, it's not super exciting. Like, I mean, it's not a great cooler overall. I don't expect this to make a major difference, but I think it will make a difference. Um, but yeah, I think generally just Dell just does a crappy job with these coolers. But again, I think for this i5, I think it'll be fine. I just wouldn't upgrade to an i7 or anything with this cooler. I would try to find some sort of aftermarket cooler that would work with this board. All right, guys, we are playing Warzone 2.0, soon to be 3.0, 4.0, it's Black Ops 6, you know, whatever, but uh, we're running 1080p, and um, we're currently in the balance preset. We're using DLSS on performance mode, because you gotta take advantage of the newer NVIDIA cards having that. Yep, performance settings, and uh, just to note, we did do a double pay swap between me playing Fortnite and us playing Warzone, and the benchmarks you'll see. The temperatures are fine, but especially in Fortnite, we didn't see it. Why didn't it? We didn't see a difference changing the thermal pace. The tower cooler is definitely limiting. And um, yeah, it's probably gonna get right back up to where it was. <laughs> like, like, what the heck? Isn't it always auto deploy? But it didn't. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we're getting pr pretty good performance. I mean, 100 plus okay, FPS. Just goes to show that there's some games that are just really well optimized. And on top of that, um, you know, 3050, like I said, guys, I think it's a little bit slept on. Yeah, it's slept on, especially with the opinion. right stuff. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, got him! Oh, oh that sneaky little! Oh, oh my God! I just got killed by Diddy. That's what the power of mini PCs are for, you know. Exactly. Oh. oh, nice. What? What? God, I missed. I... What? Hey! Oh no! my good it's golly! Beast. I feel the right leader right above me. I think they know I'm here. Oh my god. <laughs> it's the same guy you killed. Oh! Ooh. That was close. <laughs> yeah. That fire warm up blowed out. Oh my good key willikers. Oh, oh, oh. oh my god. Yes. Oh my god. My bearings, where am I? Oh, this is the gamer. This is a real gamer. <laughs> <laughs> what is oh, happening? Crap, so fast. <laughs> Dude, there's like 25 of these guys. <laughs> I ran out of ammo. It was those guys. They're way too good for me. Well, that was Warzone. Uh, very playable with the 3050 and, I mean, honestly, a really cheap rig and it was super easy to build. Let's go on to the next game. Yeah, we're on some builds and benchmarks and we'll be good to go.
Okay guys, we just got done benchmarking our $419 Office Now Gaming PC, and it did really good. We were able to play AAA titles and esports titles. Just goes to show that the 3050, although not a fan favorite card, it is a pretty versatile card. Only downside is obviously those CPU temps. Definitely running a bit warmer than I would like. Thermal paste didn't really fix that because even feeling the cooler, it is getting incredibly warm. But the threading is lined up that you could supposedly install a basic tower cooler or we'll leave some links down below. They do sell aftermarket ones that go specifically for these Dells around $11 that are taller tower coolers that would definitely fix the issue. Now we knew this little cooler was not gonna be sustainable on this Dell. So we decided to fix the problem. This is a dark rock tower cooler. Any of these or the V true tower coolers actually have the the proper mounts to where you can just thread into the built-in backplate on these motherboards. And you don't have to buy a aftermarket one on eBay. While yes, it is a little bit cheaper, you can get it for 10 to $11. This one's actually gonna perform way better, but I will say the clearance is incredibly close. The side panel does go back on, but it is very close. But honestly, the temperatures are significantly better. We're running OCT right now, a full stress test, 100% load. We are at 56 degrees Celsius with the side panel off. Obviously with on, we'll probably be in like the 60 range, but hey, this is a significant upgrade upgrade and honestly for the price definitely worth it if you get one of these for 11 bucks i think it's definitely worth it but in terms of the other benchmarks we ran we ended up playing the finals at 1080p medium settings with no fsr got an average of 70 to 80 fps we loaded up battlefield 2042 on medium settings with a 128 player conquest map got an average of 60 fps we also ran hell divers 2 at 1080p medium settings with quality fsr and got an average of 60 to 70 fps and of course our 3d mark times by score we got a score of 5122 which is only an eight cent per point average but all in all, I still think this is a pretty awesome PC for the money. Yes, you can find better deals than this on older gen hardware, but that 10400 definitely gives you longevity for upgrades. And even if you want to save some money and not go with the 3050, you have that six pin power to get, let's say a 1660 Super, get some more performance and save, oh, I don't know, 50 to $60. So all in all, if you want to build one of these yourself, check the link description down below. They will be affiliate links and they will help us out. Let us know what you think of this Dell XPS and 3050 combo. And if there's any other PCs you want to see the 3050 in, let us know in the comments down below. So guys, we hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toastybros. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye bye. PCBros.tech is an awesome place to buy gaming PCs just like this one, or you can get a really high-end one. You can get even cheaper too. Come on down to PC Bros. <laughs> buy a game PC today. Use code toastybros on checkout to save 3% of your next purchase. See you guys later. Bye bye